Hello from Not Factory Approved. I decided to uh, up my game today, get all dressed up. No, actually, I happen to be all dressed up. I just thought I'd ask, do this ask while I'm all dressed up. At least not completely grubby anyway. So it's recently come to my attention that uh, the YouTuber has uh, upped their game, their demands, so that uh, they will not monetize anybody unless you have a thousand subscribers and four thousand hours of m viewed material. So it used to be 4,500 minutes and I exceeded that and now it's dropped off to zero again for me. So four thousand hours is not a threshold I ever expect to exceed. So if you would consider moving over to rumble.com to watch these videos, then at least they will monetize immediately. It may not be much, but it's a little bit of a help. So if you would consider doing that, I'd appreciate it. If you want to continue with the YouTube, I would be fine with that as well. Thanks for watching. I hope you have enjoyed the material I've presented so far, and I will continue doing what I can. Thank you. Today, I will be showing you how I've blundered through making a hydromatic adjusting tool. Uh, don't be afraid of anything. That's my motto. Uh, and correct your mistakes later if you have to. So I'll show you the steps I made uh, to make this tool and the resource I had in order to come up with the design, which basically I'm just copying. And I hope you enjoy and I hope you find it helpful. The first tool is for the front servo, uh, adjusting the bands that are in the front of the transmission. And this is the most complex tool of the pair. And then I will show you after that how I made the rear band adjustment tool, which goes with the rear servo. So here is the, the top one is the front band adjusting tool. And the bottom one is the rear band. I'll show you how those work. But this has a spring here, which is fairly thick, an actuating rod, Gets com the spring gets compressed with this knurled knob, six turns they say, and then that puts press pressure on the, the pin, which then sticks out the end of this piece here. This is threaded into the servo. Then you have a lock nut on top, it's supposed to just seat, and then you adjust the band, which pushes the adjusting, wraps up the band, and pushes it against that pin, and then releases this nut. As soon as it's released, the band is adjusted correctly. So that's where I'm getting a 0.1 inch difference, depending. So I'm thinking probably the spring is too light. So I'm going to try and make a bigger one. Uh, the fittings I used are just uh, pieces that I've had around the shop, including some um, a long bolt that uh, was only threaded part way. I use that as the actuating pin and then a wing nut on the end and a bolt that I drilled a hole through. And then I tapped this piece to fit the bolt. So I need a stronger spring. Uh, there's a limit to how strong a spring I can put into that um, housing. So I need a bigger housing. I this is the tool I made to take the place of that, and it does work. The distance between these two pieces here and here is what's important. That has to be exactly correct. And that, showing down here, is 5 and 7 sixteenths of an inch. I'll show you how it works. And this is all from the manual. So you take the small end there, hook it on the housing, push this in, and you have to adjust it so it just clears, or just contacts, I guess. And that's done with this adjuster here, the rear one on the transmission case. And that pushes on the band that is in here. And this one 
is supposed to be locked when it is not using that hub clutch housing friction plates all that kind of stuff this one I believe is free so I will undo this adjuster that out snap up and it's that one is free and the back one is tight that's how you use the rear one so this sequence shows how um, I came up with the rear servo uh, adjusting tool it's basically a metal gauge that you adjust the servo uh, clearance to fit I hope you find that helpful too the distance that's important on this tool as you can see from the diagram is the outside edge here and the inside edge here so the one that I've made and I've checked it it's exactly five and nine sixteenths from this edge to this edge that's how it works I'll show you how it fits on the transmission so here's the rear servo <coughs> here's the one edge that you use for the shorter portion and then the upper portion is here I have to adjust that screw here this one which will then push down on that lever as the band pushes up against the pin that's into that lever and then it can make it, just make contact and it's adjust here is the history of the adjuster fabrication this is the one I got first from a fellow online and it does not work you cannot use it in a regular hydromatic he was using one from an M24 tank which had a secondary indicator because there's no way when you turn this in the six turns like they say in the manual okay, you bottom this to the rod inside the servo and then you turn it six turns to compress it to a preset limit you have no way of knowing uh, where you are putting the adjusting screw there's no feedback at all so that one didn't work and now revision 2 which was this one I welded this on so it was the preset so it went in like that and you, the spring would adjust the distance this was the spring I had in originally which started out at that length As you can see it was too soft it got compressed so that didn't work and that was adjusted with this 3 8 bolt against the spring to give the tension and then a nut on the end here a wing nut actually to tell when it cleared so that was revision 2 this one is a little ugly I know but I'm getting tired of this so I took a reducer galvanized pipe so don't use galvanized it's hard to weld you have to grind it off and then you get spitting and so on so this forms the housing like that this is threaded to 3 8 fine to get a ratio of turns so then what I do is I put this piece in and so adjust that screw for the length I want whatever works out well then you put this stronger spring in then this washer stops the spring from going up inside here this started off as a barbed fitting on a threaded pipe so then that goes together like that you want some play there tighten it up then I have this 3 8 bolt fine I've drilled a hole through it so it fits over top 
and does not contact, doesn't thread onto this quarter inch pipe. So then you thread that down just to start it. Okay, this could use a little more play on it. It's a bit tight yet. And then this is the indicator goes on the end. I'll show you how that I've already shown you how that works, but I'll do it again. There we go. Over to the transmission. Here's the adjuster, front band. Take the plug out of the servo. This threads in here, so you can see that that's too long at the moment. You have to make that shorter. Now it's all in and adjusted. That just springs against the rod inside the servo, so that's about right. So now I turn it in eight turns because of the threads that are on this. I don't believe it's six. I'll check that. I think it's 20 threads, so it's going to be six turns. So all I need now is a 9 16th again. Here it is. Okay, let's. Turn it six turns. One, two. I don't want that turning. That changes the adjustment. Go off screen now and turn it. Six. Okay, revision four coming up. I'm going to put these two springs inside just to increase the tension a bit. Uh, scaling up the diagram, if I'm correct, and the dimensions are correct then the spring would be three quarters of an inch, actually slightly more wide. And this is the one I'm using, which is seven sixteenths of an inch wide. It is pretty stiff, so I'll just add some boost to it with these two, see if that helps. So here's how to use it, I think. So I've screwed in the base, I've put two nuts on there to lock it. I might have to cut those down into half. So there's got to be some clearance between the end where the washer is, or the end of the housing rather, and the nuts. So that's hitting well. Then put on the rest of the housing, which has the washer inside it. You can see it. Washer inside there. Yeah, fell out. Let's go looking for a washer. Now it's got a washer inside there. You can hear it. Put that on. Let's try that first. that on there and screw that on Get a slight bit of tension there on the spring now we put the adjuster okay so that's up against the washer now for the adjuster Screwed it in, it's up against the washer. A bit of springiness there. Start the indicator. Make sure the adjuster is loose. Band is loose. Now, six turns. Here's the diagram of the um, unit that I've settled on and uh, just hoping that that makes things clearer for you if you decide to make this. I have no idea where you can get this tool. I have not seen anybody offering one for sale and uh, you can imagine they're pretty rare. So 
course, to make our own. All the best. One, two, three, four, five, six. A little bit of tension there. Now screw in the adjuster and watch for clearance. Okay, I know I've said this before. I think I'm onto something now. So I've set this all up. This is loose, just to show what I've done on the inside. I've used two low profile nuts. That has helped a bit, locked it in position. So now it has range of motion without spring. There, no spring tension. Screw it in. I know this thing looks real crude, but I didn't. I wanted to do it without welding, but without going to the store and getting a bunch of fittings. This is what I was left with. So now, wind this in until there's spring tension. there. We wind it a further six turns. Loosen the adjuster. One, two, three, four, five, six. All I'm doing there is adjusting the spring tension against the actuator inside Spin this up, adjust the adjuster, and look for a gap in freedom of motion with the wing nut. And there you go, just moved. The band is tight, yeah, not overly tight. But that's loose. Now you can unwind it. And in theory, it's adjusted. And I'll find out if I actually got it once I have it in the car. Put the plug back in. Put the lock nut on. The adjuster is over here. that up and lock it. The fact that that adjuster is moving indicates to me that I might have to check that again. It shouldn't be that free, I don't think. But the band is not completely free either, so I'll leave it like that. find out for sure when I put it in the car. For now, I'm going to assume that that works. Don't forget to clean and put the filter on. Make sure that this spring here goes into that tube there, which is the rear pump pickup. There, so you put it on here, line it up, Snap it on. Now to clean the pan, put on the silicone and clamp it up. And this silicone, you have to clamp it up lightly and then wait 24 hours. And that's a very important step I've found over the years. Don't cheat it. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, or even notify. Or any of the above, or all of the above. Thank you.
the other thing that, 